Hello everyone, what is up? It's me, Ewan, from What Culture Comics, again joined by Zoe. Continue. To, to talk about some really cool comic book news because we have lots of different stuff. It's only Tuesday, but there are still some really interesting things that have emerged over the weekend and of course yesterday. And one of those things is that uh, Boom Studios, which is all in caps and an exclamation mark just to emphasize the BOOM of Boom Studios, they've announced a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Power Rangers crossover, which, you know, coming in the wake of the Jenica news from last week, the Turtles are having a little bit of a resurgence right it's now. It's turtle time. And uh, I don't know if anyone else here remembers the really weird... People said... People got really angry and I called it really bad. The Saban uh, live-action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, TV show from the late 90s. They had a crossover with the Power Rangers in space. I'm sure you'll have seen the GIFs on Twitter. They're basically just there and it's really... It's really weird, but these are actually crossing over with the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And yeah, it looks really, really cool. It's being written by Ryan Parrott and illustrated by Simone DeMeo. And the press release is actually really interesting. So the Power Rangers arrive in New York City to find Tommy Oliver, aka the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger, aka the best one of the lot. But soon discover he's joined forces with the villainous Shredder and the Foot Clan. Interesting. As the Rangers are sent reeling by this betrayal, they are confronted by another frenemy, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Can these heroes find a way to work together to defeat the bad guys and save the world from total destruction? I don't know about you, but I'm down for more Turtles crossovers. I mean, we just had Batman, we've had other ones before. Why do you think the Turtles kind of cross over well with so many different properties? I mean, when you remember that the Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover had the line, I saw my parents die, Raphael. It's, it's difficult to not be like, can we just have them everywhere? Yeah. Can we just have a Punisher Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover? Because I've not seen the film, but I have read the Batman TMNT crossover comic, and I know they did a specific version of that as well, where it was the animated Turtles crossing over with the animated Batman as well. And it's kind of all kind of canon. It's, Every single one. It's really cool. And yeah, yeah. so basically Power Rangers crossing over with the Turtles, IDW and Boom Studios doing really cool stuff as they tend to do. So I definitely recommend checking that out when it releases later this year. And also maybe, you know, try and get your hands on the next Turtles comic as well because, oh boy, those things are selling like hotcakes. I think with the next issue where Jenica is actually appearing is going for stuff like $75 already on eBay and they're not actually selling it at San Diego Comic Con because <laughs> they're so afraid of Stampede. So might be a collector's item in the future, who knows? But yeah, what was the next story, Zoe? Well, the next one is basically there's been some rumors coming out in the uh, in the medias in uh, Bleeding Call that uh, Gotham Girl might in fact be the next Robin. So um, basically, for those who don't know, uh, the rumors were sort of confirmed that she would be Thomas Wayne's sidekick uh, with the cover of Batman 77 uh, and the cover of Batman 76, which is obviously confusing because I don't, have you been keeping up to? I read up until the <laughs> wedding and I was really burned and by the wedding. Hurt. Even though I really like Tom King and I really like what he's been doing, I heard a lot of people said that it reads better in trade. So I'm waiting again to, for it to come out in trade so I can actually read all of it from start to finish. But it looks really cool. It, it's I just, very, very good. I was so confused by that big reveal at the end of 50 when you had Bane and Thomas Wayne and Gotham Girl and Skeets. Oh, Boost of Gold Skeets, what's he doing there? I still don't know. But yeah, what is going on? So essentially, uh, the last time we saw Gotham Girl, she had gone like full, full bad. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually in a Flash Batman crossover. Um, and essentially, Batman has a sort of moment where like she's about to die, she's used too much of her powers. Um, and sort of him and the Flash stand over her, and he's like, I can't let her die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't do this. So the last that we saw, she was actually in like a stasis chamber in the Flash 65. Uh, so this is more or less confirmed that not only will she be coming back, she'll be coming back evil, but the speculation is that she may be coming back to become a Robin, oh. which I think is very interesting. Like a good Robin or like, like a, a bad Robin? So she's going to definitely start out as a bad Robin, mm -hmm. but essentially like uh, a lot of media speculation has been that she may not stay a bad Robin. And I can, I can see it because every time we see Gotham Girl, it's in this kind of like... Well, I'm, I'm bad because my brother died. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, who, who could possibly empathize with someone being sad because their family died? Ah, <laughs> that's interesting because like, that would bring a whole new dynamic to Batman and Robin. And I kind of am a big fan when they reversed that. You know, when Damien was, was Robin, you kind of had a jokey, lighthearted Batman and a really ruthless, scowling Robin. 
So the fact that you could maybe have a bit of a Superman dynamic going on with the dynamic duo here, that would be pretty cool. I would be curious to see what would happen to Damien in that situation. Yeah, that's the only yeah. thing. A lot of people are upset at the concept because it would take Damien out of the picture. Mm. But I'm, I mean, there's possibly be a way to do it where, because we obviously we had Red Robin and Robin at one point, mm -hmm. and they were, let's be honest, both Robins. So there'd be a way to shenanigan it, to get a sort of- Shenanigan it. Just shenanigan it, get a Gotham girl Robin. Yeah. I mean, as long as everyone's in a, in a friendly family situation. You can have whatever name you want. Uh, that releases this Wednesday, doesn't it? Batman it does 7. indeed. Cool, I'm excited. I, I kind of thought originally that it was the last, this was the start, this is actually the end of it, but he's actually got 10 more issues left on the yeah. title and then he gets prematurely kicked off to do Batwoman, Batman and Catwoman next February which I'm excited for. You know, I really like what Tom King's doing on this series. I, as I say, I've not been reading it since 50, but I do, I'm a big fan of people pushing Batman out of his comfort zone, which kind of seems what he's been doing with this for the past couple of months. But anyway, moving on to the next news, we had a bunch of DC Black Label titles get announced over the weekend. And just before, two of them I'm really, 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 really <laughs> excited about because Jeff Lemire is teaming up with Dennis Cohen and Bill Sienkiewicz to do a brand new question comic book called The Many Deaths of Vic Sage. And anyone who knows me knows that I love the question. I absolutely love the question. I did an editorial on why Dennis O'Neill and Dennis Cohen's question is like literally the best comic of all time. Maybe click on it down here somewhere. I don't around. know. Um, but yeah, he's announced that along with a Joker comic called Joker Killer Smile. And you can probably tell right now that DC in the build up to Joaquin Phoenix's film are basically just going to load the Joker everywhere to the point where maybe we'll get a little bit bored of him. Maybe, but the actual premise behind Killer Smile sounds really, really cool. It's got a really creepy cover, and um, Andrea Sorrentino is actually doing the art for it again. They've been kind of a frequent collaborator, both Lemire and Sorrentino, and it's basically going to focus focus on like the kind of the more interpersonal horror of Joker. Like a lot of people use the character to like dissect the state of society, as it were. But it looks like we're actually going to see how his madness impacts people personally, which I'm personally down for. Well, I think, yeah, we've played we've played so much with the Joker, like, oh, he's scary, he'll cut his face off, and it's like, you don't need that physical level of horror, like, the most frightening thing about the Joker is that he can essentially have a chat with you, and then you wake up the next day and you're like, oh, I'm evil now, oh, I didn't realise, that's unfortunate. <laughs> it's the Joker's favours Joker that really terrifies <laughs> you, like, you're just there, like, driving along with your little car going vroom vroom, and then you, like, you get some road rage, and then the Joker just winds down the, the window, and he's like, Hey, that terrifies me. There was that really good uh, DC Nation issue that Tom King and Clayman did where the Joker is just waiting for his wedding invitation and he's just terrorizing that one person. I found that really, really horrifying. But obviously the most exciting thing for me about all of these announcements is the fact that Cohen is going back to the question. And it's kind of being framed as this really ridiculous time travel-y kind of tale involving Sage going through the different generations. It's not going to be a direct continuation of what O'Neill did. And I don't know how the continuity matches up. I'm fairly certain it's out of continuity because we have both Vic and Renee Montoya currently doing the rounds in both Event Leviathan and Lois Lane. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of interested about that. But seeing Vic Sage in different eras Sign me up. Sign and me it's up. it's essentially what they did with that, uh, the Batman series. Yes. And that managed Wayne. to fit somehow mm. into the actual canon without feeling like too ridiculous. Yeah. So, I mean, I solidly believe they could do it with the question because because so few people like fully remember it because not everyone mm. has read all it's of the questions. It's out of print. It's yeah. out of print. It's really bad DC. Why is it out of print? <laughs> so, I mean, they could sort of do whatever they want mm. at this point, which would be Pretty damn exciting. Yeah, and also John Carpenter is actually going to be writing a Joker comic later in the year as well as a part of Year of the Villain. Um, yeah, he's co-writing that with Borderlands 2 writer Anthony Birch. I'm so excited. Uh, yeah, John Carpenter on comics. He already did a spin-off comic of uh, Big Trouble in Little China last year. I want to see him do more super villains. That sounds really, really cool. The cover by Philip Tan is like horrifying. I don't know if it, you can see it to my left or to my right or whatever. But yeah, no, that sounds really, really cool. John Carpenter doing creepy horror stuff with the clown prince of crime. I'm here for it. I mean, essentially, when interviewed about it, he was just like, oh yeah, I know, he's gonna be the most frightening thing you've ever seen. Mm. He's the best and most frightening uh, villain ever. And it's like, okay, John, yeah. no, that's fine. He's so extra. I went to see him <laughs> live in Newcastle last year, and when they did the theme from uh, They Live, they all got like sunglasses out, and when the fog happened, the, the instruments stopped working, but the fog was coming out on the drive, that's coming so out on screen. He's basically really extra, and I'm here for that with a Joker. But yeah, moving on to the last bit of news that we have this week, what is that, Zoe? Well, I'm pretty excited about it. Mm. Uh, for those who don't know about the Dark Multiverse, it's essentially that sort of like elsewhere alternative what-if kind of story thing. Um, and they've gone, they've gone 
full, full crazy with it. They've essentially taken like two of the most famous, I would say two of the most famous mm -hmm. DC stories. So The Death of Superman mm. and Nightfall. Yes. Uh, and they've just totally twisted it on their heads, but not in a way, you know, like sometimes people take Alice in Wonderland and make it dark and you're mm. like, oh, wow, it's just Alice in Wonderland. But Tim Burton, why? <laughs> I'm not calling out any but Tim Burton. I am. <laughs> don't, don't do me like this. Uh, yeah, so the, it should be particularly interesting because Nightfall has, um, for those who don't know, it's the comic where Bane sort of breaks down Batman. It's a really definitive one because we see Batman get like broken and come back up again. But this story explores like, what if he just stayed down? What if he just decided, nah? Uh, so it has, um, I always forget, Jean-Paul. Oh, yeah, Jean-Paul Valley. Jean -Paul. Yeah. Uh, so it's <laughs> Definitely a... my boy, I think. <laughs> Actually, not my boy in no. the context of this story. Oh, God, it's, what has he done? It's Jean-Paul becoming Saint Batman, which oh. is the best name that he could have possibly taken for Batman. Uh, and just going full hog wild, just yeah. going full murder crazy until the son of Bane comes to... Uh, comes to talk to him. That's really interesting. I really like Dark Knight's Metal. It's the most <laughs> crazy comic ever. And I love multiverse stuff. And the fact that we're getting to see more of the dark multiverse, bar just more Batman who laughs and the Shazam who laughs, I guess, is pretty cool. The and Shazam who giggles. The Shazam who giggles. But yeah, I, I'm really happy to see more dark multiverse stuff. Well, ironically, that's not even the one I'm most excited about. Mm. I just think it's the one that most people will be. The other one, uh, the Death of Superman one, includes an evil Lois Lane. It's happening. Oh, wow. We talked about it. We talked about it for Event Leviathan, mm -hmm. but it can't be happening because we've already got an evil Lois Lane. She's already here. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe in that universe, Lois Lane will be behind Event Leviathan. Maybe. I, I believe. Maybe. If you guys aren't aware of Event Leviathan, <laughs> it's this comic coming out in DC at the moment. We just did a podcast last week about kind of discussing the intricacies of who it might be. Basically, it's a really difficult mystery, but we're trying our best to solve it. We'll probably return to the topic in the future as well. The I've next already got my tinfoil hat. Yeah, tinfoil hats and string and whiteboards are plenty. They will be there next time around. But yeah, I want to know what you all thought of these new stories down in the comments below. And are you looking forward to San Diego Comic Con as well? Because that's just around the corner. There's going to be loads of new interesting announcements that are sure to come. Stuff with the X-Men involving at Marvel. And then we've also got loads of DC stuff. There is a Batman Beyond panel that I'm sure everyone is going to want to check out because Will Friedel and Kevin Conroy are going to be on there. And there could be announcements i don't even know anymore but yeah just let us know what you thought down in the comments below and don't forget to like share and subscribe and head back on over to whatculture.com forward slash comics for more lists news and articles every day as always i've been ewan you can follow me on twitter at ewan ruins things and have been joined by zoe continue to be zoe and you can find me at zemma and we'll see you next time bye bye